It's Madden NFL 23 on EA Sports, and there's no love lost between these NFC North foes. It's the Minnesota Vikings and the Chicago Bears. All that and more coming up next on EA Sports. One of the great venues to watch a game in any sport and one of the best home crowds in any sport, Soldier Field in Chicago. To the NFC North between the Minnesota Vikings and the Chicago Bears. And a welcome in, everybody, with Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gauden, and Charles, so much gets made about offensive comparisons. Here's a matchup where the defenses may just take center stage. Yeah, we're usually talking about guys scoring touchdowns. How about the guys who prevent them and change the momentum of the game when they take the ball away? I love those ball hawks in the secondary. People after my own heart. Here's Cairo Santos now, ready to get this one started. And off we go from Soldier Field. And he opts to not bring this one out. The first drive will start at the 25. Minnesota's offense and QB Kirk Cousins set to go here. Not bad for a fourth round draft pick. Well over 100 career starts now. And the chemistry with his top targets, really on point. They spend a lot of time in practice and after practice making sure the routes are run well and he knows exactly where they're going to be on the field. And when they get open, he delivers. Play action now, Cousins. And that'll be incomplete. We do have a penalty flag down, however. Let's see what that's about. What's the deal, y'all? Well, obviously, they never want to see penalties on that defense, but this one, a little bit more significant there on the downfield pass play. And coaches preach it all the time. You can't put yourself in that kind of position if you're the defender. You've got to stay in a spot far downfield where you can play the ball without creating extra contact. After the penalty, a fresh set of downs. It's first and ten. First play, here's Cousins. Oh, he's going to take a shot right away. And it's caught in the end zone. Touchdown, Minnesota. Well, he's been doing this for a lot of years with the arm strength still there, and he showed it off on that one. And we knew that this offense was going to try and put pressure on the secondary. That was something they talked about with us. They knew that they had an advantage, pressed it, and there you go. Big play for a touchdown on their very first possession. And that one covering an even 63 yards in the air. Greg Joseph on for the extra point. He's got it, and the Vikings take a 7-0 lead. Those are the kind of drives they like on offense, from the coordinator to the quarterback, the line, everybody. One play drive and into the end zone for six.
Now Joseph tees it up to kick off following the touchdown. Takes it at the seven. A solid return, pretty good field position. They'll start at the 32. So here are the Bears now for their opening drive. They'll be led out by a first-round pick back in 2021 from Ohio State at Justin Fields. And I'll bet he's talking to his guys about resisting the temptation to try and turn this into an up-and-down game, almost like basketball, where both teams press and one team gets an advantage. Our team's trying to run with them, and they're just not equipped for it. Doesn't matter whether you're equipped or not. Just settle in, get calm before you go for the big strikes. Fields and the Bears now with a first and 10 at about the 32. They'll run it here. This is Deontay Foreman, and he'll manage to pick up about four at second down. End result of that one, a nice four-yard gain. So you can use that to set up your play-action game, or you can come right back and continue to run the football because as an offensive play caller, you're on schedule and feeling pretty good about your next couple of calls. They run again with Foreman. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. It's a pickup of 10 and a Bears first down. Into the line. the two tight ends. They scouted the line of scrimmage. With their agility, they can get upfield and hit moving targets like linebackers, defensive backs. They do a really good job helping out the running game. After the run by Foreman, here's first and 10. Out of the gun, Fields. Looking left side, that's caught by Moore. And they're going to get this to about the 44-yard line. Throwing again on second down. Fields. He'll get that complete to his tight end, Cole Komet. And this is going to turn into another first down as the tackle is made at the Vikings 23. A gain there of 21 yards. Nice job there of utilizing his big target. He didn't overthink it. Understands the catch radius. Understands that he knows how to use his body to keep defenders away from the ball. And puts it right out there for the nice pickup. Now a first down throw, Fields. And this will be caught by Mooney. And he's going to be brought down at about the 16. Second and two. From the gun, here's Fields. Got a man and he hits him in stride. And the Bears are going to have a first and goal as the tackle is made at about the five. Well, no question, this is exactly how they wanted to start this football game. And nice pass there. Another setup beautifully, Charles, to finish this off with a touchdown. Yeah, but they've still got to finish it off, partner, and that means they've got to execute at this stage of the field. So we've seen many teams march it right to the goal line and not cash in. They've got something dialed up here that puts it in the end zone. First and goal and a chance to get that initial touchdown right back. Fields now to throw. Oh, that's into a double team and it's intercepted. Andrew Booth picks it off. And it's a terrific return here as he's going to have them set up with a first and goal right at about the six-yard line. 
Definitely not the ideal time to see that mistake, partner, because this is still a one-possession game, and that's at least a field goal that just vanished with that turnover. Now, pressure's on defensively to prevent that pick from turning into points for the other side. The Vikings taking the field here for their second drive of the game. And now they are in prime position, first and goal after the interception and return. They'll look to make it pay off for six points. Suddenly it's first and goal after the interception. A quick change in the situation here. They'll go Madison up the middle. And he gets halfway there from the six to the three on a gain of three. Yeah, that wasn't a big run, just a short one there. But guess what? Sometimes you treat it like boxing. You throw that jab out there, and you throw it again, you throw it again. Then you come with a big punch later. Maybe they're just trying to set him up. So the ball position now at the three. Here's second and goal. Cousins. And it's caught in the end zone for the Viking touchdown by Justin Jefferson. A three-yard touchdown pass. And the Vikings are able to strike quickly to add on to their lead. They've got to be thrilled on the road right now. Touchdown, turnover, touchdown, and quickly trying to make it 14 to nothing. Yeah, and mentioned it already. On the road, to be able to go into someone else's house and establish a start like that, obviously your confidence rises in a big way, and you're putting some doubt in their minds. Joseph connects on the extra point, and it's now 14 to nothing. They had the short field, and they made quick work of it. Just two plays to get into the end zone. Now Joseph tees it up to kick off following the touchdown. From the six. And out a little across the 25 to the 27. Chicago works their way back onto the field here for their second drive of the game. And Charles, it's kind of gut check time. Look, I know it's early first quarter, just their second drive of the game, but they've already thrown the interception given up the score you're down double digits they got to figure out something and pretty quickly here no doubt about it and when we look at that sideline i'm sure you're observing the same thing i am i don't like the body language at all they look like they're in a state of stunned disbelief so to me we always talk about someone stepping up and making a big play i think it would behoove them if multiple guys step up and make big plays right now they need something positive to happen and they need for it to happen now it's a six yard gain on the ground and that'll make it second and four well, you're down early. How do you get back in the game? Maybe establish the run. I think they're trying to do that. I'm with you on that one. And what I like about the message is that there's no panic from the head coach. He's already told his offensive coordinator, let's run the football. Let's get things settled down a little bit and find our way back into this game. That ball nearly intercepted. The rookie had his hands on it but couldn't pull it in. Well, nearly another interception there. That would have been two drives in a row with a pick. He's got to start taking care of the ball way better than what we're saying. Interestingly, that throw was probably worse than the one he threw the interception on last drive, but fell incomplete. A shotgun snap, Fields. And too much juice. It'll be out of bounds, incomplete. Well, they've moved the ball okay here in these first two drives, but this one's going to, again, amount to nothing. They've got to start dialing up some plays that allow them to finish drives with points. The fourth down, so they send out Trenton Gill. Back deep, Brandon Powell. Uh, did they keep it in? They did. They kept it in. It's down close to the goal line at the one-yard line. 
You rarely call your punter a weapon, but he certainly was there. How about that? Pinning him down at the one-yard line and helping out the defense in a big way. I'm telling you what, if I'm a defensive coordinator, I might be thinking safety right now. end zone Cousins this one caught by his tight end Oliver and he'll be out of bounds right at about the 10 yard line so the completion results there in nine yards and it'll bring up a second and short Here's a give to Madison running right. And he'll be a couple yards shy of the 20 at the 18. That one, a first down pickup of eight. Second and one is often an invitation to take the big shot downfield. I'll bet the offensive lineman said, are you kidding? We just get on our backs and let's go get the first down. They love being physical. Back-to-back -back good plays have them on the move on first down. Back to the ground on first down. Here's Madison. And he'll find some space up to about the 25. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. Well, that run right there was an offensive line coach's dream, wasn't it? Guys picked up all their assignments, created a nice gap for the running back to get through, pick up seven yards. Yeah, he's probably chortling on the headset right now, saying, we got it going, boys. Let's keep it going. Play fake. Cousins. This goes out wide for Madison. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. 13 yards as the Vikings pick up the first down. Well, I like the play design there. They occupied the defense downfield. Everyone trying to account for someone. But unfortunately, they didn't account for the running back slipping out of the backfield. And he was absolutely unnoticed and wound up getting big yards on that play. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. Running from the shotgun with Madison. No, oh, a nifty juke there. Not much fun for a guy trying to tackle him. And strong running there as he's across midfield and down to the 49. A 14-yard gain there as they look to improve this 14-point lead. After he cleared the line of scrimmage, nice little hole developed. Yeah, yeah, great blocking right there at the start. But how about his vision, finding the open spaces and letting his feet carry him to him? So into Bear territory now. This is first and 10 at the 49-yard line. Another carry now for Madison. And he'll get this into enemy territory, but not by much as he's down to the 48. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. The best defensive linemen, they play with great leverage so they can get low and not get bowled over by offensive linemen. They have excellent hands. They can throw people off on a play. We just saw a great example of a really good run stop by a guy playing the defensive tackle position. On second down, this is Madison. Looking for a cutback lane, but nothing there as he's met at the line of scrimmage. Now we're going to get a stoppage. There appears to be an injured bear on the field. Hopefully, obviously nothing serious here. Medical staff, though, going to take a peek, and we'll take a break. Now play number eight on this drive, and they need nine yards to pick up the first on third. Now Cousins. 
They'll get this underneath to Madison. And he can only manage to get this to the 45-yard line. Well short of the first. That's going to bring up fourth down, only a gain of two there. Partner, I think that completion takes the definition of dink and dunk to a different level, doesn't it? It does, and the defense was right there, kind of played into their hands. So on fourth down, Ryan Wright on to punt for Minnesota. The speedster Dante Pettis back deep to return. And that one hits at the seven, but bounds into the end zone, and that'll be a touchback. Now this offense back out and set to go for their next drive. They find themselves in a good size hole here, and a good size hole early on in this game as they come up on first down. Now Fields. That's complete to Mooney. And he gets this one just shy of the 40, down at the 39. 19 yards there on the catch and run. And this was a nice example of an offensive coordinator scheming his guy open, just a little underneath route, just trying to free up some space. And it worked awfully well. Got him not just space, but plenty of room to run after the catch to pick up really nice yardage. From up near the 40 now after the big play to start, here's another first and 10. Back to throw, Fields. Quick hitter here, it's complete. And they're gonna get this to about the 44 yard line. One of my old teammates called me the other day when he was watching the game, he's like, man, trying to watch an NFL game and trying to account for their passing game? That's difficult. And just when you think you get everything covered, here comes a back out of the backfield. And in this case, he picks up a first down. From Viking territory now, they'll come up first and 10 at the 44-yard line. Now Foreman. The tackle goes to Harrison Smith. And that's exactly what you want on a first down run. Pick up five yards, bring up second and five. The defensive line, though, they've got to figure out a way to out leverage the guys up front because the offensive line is winning at the point of attack. After the pickup of five, here's second and five. Now it's Fields. That pass complete to Moore. And this is going to turn into another first down as the tackle is made at the Vikings 28. And now they'll stop play here, at least momentarily. A member of the Vikings in some discomfort after that last play. Well, now they're going to come out and take a look at this injury, and we'll be back in a moment. A carry for Foreman. And he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. Three yards on that last carry. Here's second and seven. Fields. That's going to be caught. And they are able to stop him, but he does take it all the way to the two. 23 yards, the final tally. Tries to move the chains that time. They had to complete it in a double coverage, and they got it done. And it's never easy overcoming multiple defenders, but he sure made it look simple. Found the right spot to exploit and won his one-on-two matchup. Mm -hmm. 
First and goal, and they got to be thinking a chance to get right back into this football game. Here's Fields. Got his man, and it's caught for a Chicago touchdown. Chase Claypool, a two-yard touchdown grab. And the Bears have cut it back within a score. And down near the goal line here, they're able to throw it in. And the key word, quick. Quick hitter out of his hands fast, into the receiver's hands even faster. Cairo Santos on to try the extra point. And that one makes it 14 to 7. So that a seven play, 80 yard drive. And it was finished off by the Chase Claypool touchdown catch. To the touchdown here, Santos to kick this one away. The return man down to a knee, and this will come out to the 25 yard line. And now out comes Minnesota. No points last time out. They were forced to punt, if you remember, but no time to dwell on that. They've still got the lead here and a chance to add to that here. First and 10 as this new drive starts. Cousins and the Vikings with a first and 10 at their 25-yard line. Here's a play fake as they set up to throw. Oh, going for Jefferson downfield. It got his man complete. And he's going to be brought down at about the 16. Excellent execution, and now they're set up nicely. Are they ever? Red zone? I wonder what the next play call is going to be because after a big play like that, a lot of teams like to use the momentum to launch another one. So the ball down to the 16 here for first and 10. Now a give to Madison. And they'll lose yardage here. Knocked back to the 19-yard line. Different story this time around. We had that huge gain followed by a sizable loss here. And we often talk about defensive end setting the edge, sometimes even the outside linebackers. But how about here? This is a quarterback essentially setting the edge and finishing off that play for a loss. So their task a little bit more difficult now. Second and 13 that they're walking up on. On the jet sweep, here comes Jefferson. And they'll work this down to the 15 for a pickup of four. Let's just make this one succinct. Nice job there, all 11 guys on defense. Diagnosing the jet sweep and putting it down. Through one quarter, 14-7, our score. The Vikings with the football here to begin the second quarter. In need of a conversion on third down. They had the big play to start the drive. Not much sense. Now, here's a look for the end zone, but that one's going to wind up incomplete. And I feel like my man, Old Momentum, might be changing jerseys right now. How about what they just got done? They scored a touchdown their last drive. Now here's a three and out. Maybe Momentum's getting ready to creep to the other sideline. Fourth down, field goal try coming, so Cousins is off, and on comes Greg Joseph for Minnesota. This just 32 yards officially from the right hash. Joseph's got it. And they will move up by 10 now, 17 to seven. 
So that one on target, and it adds to this first half lead. And maybe we're too early to worry too much about one score lead, two score lead, etc. But this is where you kind of start banking those points that come in helpful later on. Joseph now to kick this one away. No run back here for Jones, a touchback. Here's Justin Fields and the rest of the Chicago offense. He had the short touchdown pass on their previous drive, and they'll begin again here on first and ten. Here's Fields. He hits Mooney going across the middle. Finding room at midfield. And they'll work this down inside the 30. Well, fair to say that when you're looking at guys that can run like the wind, you often find them at the wide receiver position. And that was special there. And that's the kind of play where you have to kind of catch your breath afterwards. So just give me a second here because when he shifted into high gear, he was an absolute blur out there. No substitute for speed. We talk about that all the time. The evidence was right there. So now then, the big play has him all the way inside the 30 now, first and 10. To throw his fields. And he'll protect himself at the end here as he winds up getting pretty decent yardage. He'll get five out of the scramble. It's second down. I certainly like what he did right there because he smartly wanted to avoid forcing anything downfield because nothing appeared to be open. Nice harmless slide there to avoid the big hit. And he gets a small gain on the play. To throw again on second down. Fields. And that is incomplete. Coverage was very good that time. A nice job to smother him as the ball arrived, and that ensured an incomplete pass. And it keeps six points off the board. In need of a conversion on third down. They had the big play to start the drive. Not much sense. Operating from the gun, Fields. He'll get that complete to Khalil Herbert. And able to get him down, but he does reach the five. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. A very important third down conversion right there, because when you're trying to find yourself this deep in enemy territory, the kicker's not even part of your thought process. You got to make it pay off with six. Nice connection right there to set up first and goal. First and goal, and they got to be thinking a chance to get right back into this football game. Looking to throw. Fields. And he's going to go down. Sank back at the 13-yard line. And Daniil Hunter, he's the one who gets in there and brings him down to the ground. Well, there's still time to rectify this situation because the silver lining, it took a sack on first and goal. But that close to the goal line, that still definitely hurts. Two of their three red zone trips so far, they've come up empty on. They'll look to reverse that trend on second and goal. Over the middle, that's caught by Claypool. They'll wind up getting seven on the completion, but they'll still be faced now with a third and goal situation.
Back to throw. Fields. And he takes this one in for a Bears touchdown. Justin Fields. A six-yard touchdown run. And the Bears have got it back to within a score. They were looking to pass the ball there, but they forgot to account for the man with the football. Yeah, I can hear people right now saying, well, why don't you have a spy in your defense, someone who will dance with him and go where he goes? Well, oftentimes, if you utilize a spy, you've taken away someone in coverage as well. And oftentimes, the spy, not as athletic as the guy he's trying to keep up with, so he gets defeated anyway. And he turns third and goal into a touchdown. Santos able to tack on the extra point, and the lead's down to a field goal at To the touchdown here Santos to kick this one away taking in at the three and he won't quite make it to the 25 Minnesota's offense takes over possession and they're not going to play this conservative, I don't think. They had the field goal last time, and they're up, but they're looking to put a drive in the end zone. Oh, I agree with you totally. No one is, goes out on the field and says, all right, let's just settle for three, except in certain situations, trying to ice a game, that sort of deal. Most of the time, it's end zone, and that's what you're thinking, and I believe that's exactly what they're thinking as they begin this one. Yeah, no quarterback ever goes out there saying, hey, let's get three, right? <laughs> <laughs> not one that I've ever met. Cousins throw pulled in by Jefferson. And yeah, this will be a gain of five as he gets it to the 30. Ball on the 30. They'll come up with a second and five. Cousins. And that's complete to K.J. Osborne. First connection there of the afternoon for those two, and it's good for a first down. Throwing his cousins. Out route to Jefferson, and he's got it. And he'll be out of bounds after getting this one across the 40. And yeah, that's good for a gain of six, and it'll be second down. Cousins again. Throw left side complete. That's Osborne. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made here at the Bears' 45-yard line. 12 yards there as they move the chains. So into Bear territory now. This is first and 10 at the 45-yard line. To throw, Cousins. His throw incomplete. And not a common sight, at least on this drive. A momentary setback, though, for this passing game that has been moving well this series. Good thing for them, though. Still two more downs to connect and try and pick up another first down. Yeah. 
An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. On the handoff, it's Madison. And able to push forward for right around three yards down to the 42. And they'll need to get to the 35 if they want to keep this drive going on third down. Throwing, Cousins. He's going to let this go. Back of the end zone. He's got his man. It's taken in for a Viking touchdown. Kirk Cousins with three touchdown passes now in the afternoon as his guys are able to extend their lead. Quite a show of arm strength right there. That was in the air for a long time, and it was on target, too. And that is absolutely demoralizing for a defense because you've got the offense on the ropes. It's third down. You're trying to get off the field, and then wham. You have a letdown in the secondary, and you give up a big one. And that one's spanning at even 65 yards in the air, according to Next Gen Stats. Joseph now to have the PAT. And his guys will take a 10-point lead. So the drive winds up going 75 yards in seven plays. And it all culminates in a touchdown for Minnesota. Now Joseph tees it up to kick off following the touchdown. And this will come out to the 25 as Jones elects for the touchback. And now Chicago getting ready to go as they take the field. They're down now 24-14. Work to do as they come up on a first and 10. Fields now to throw. Oh, nice move. <laughs> and they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. The coverage may be too good that time as he breaks away for 19 with his legs and a first down. I can't be sure how much of that was planned pre-snap, but it certainly opens up some avenues for their offense. And if he can stay a threat to break off those kind of runs, It'll pull defenders away from coverage and open up some choice throwing lanes for him moving forward. Took just one play to move all the way to the 44 as they try again on first down. They'll run with Foreman. And they went the wrong way there. Losing yardage back at the 43-yard line. They'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. I like the strategy. Extra tight ends, extra beef. They want to run the football, but that means they probably want to run it inside. If you get strung out on the perimeter, you're in peril. Yeah, we saw the result. Negative yardage. On second and 11 now. Fields. Completion here to Claypool. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work this to the 45. I think it all came together there. In-breaking route. Drove it with excellent pace. Money throw right there to move the sticks. From Viking territory now, they'll come up first and 10 at the 45-yard line. Now a toss play. This is Foreman. And that play goes nowhere. Taken down, losing yardage at the 50, right at midfield. It was Daniil Hunter to make the play in the backfield. I have a feeling they'll stay committed to running the football, especially on the early downs. They just haven't had a whole lot of success just yet.
He'll have to deal with a second and 14 now after the loss. From the 50, here's Fields. Able to hit his target, Claypool. And this is going to turn into another first down as the tackle is made at the Vikings 26. 23 yards the pick up there. Of course the catch was nice, but how about what happened after? Able to stay on his feet and gain all that additional yardage. So many of these slot guys, I think, have running back in their background. On first down, it's Fields. And he can't get rid of it. He's taken down. Daniil Hunter, that is now two sacks for him here in this first half. So this has been a lot like a tennis match, hasn't it? Back and forth. Both of these offenses have their way so far. So maybe the question isn't who's going to score the most points in this game. Maybe it's who's going to get some stops. Yeah, absolutely. And that sack, finally a first step in the right direction for a stop. Following the sack, they'll try to change their fortune here on second and 13. Looking to throw. Fields. Dancing to his left. And his throw is going to be incomplete. It's been a nice day for him as a passer and as a runner. One of the few mistakes he's made in this ballgame. The wrong choice on that one. That one goes incomplete. And this offense on third down today, they've been okay. Two for three thus far. This is going to be third and 13. And he can't find a receiver, and he's brought down. D.J. Wadham got off his spot quickly and got to the quarterback. But you do need to know as a young quarterback that if you're going to spread the field, the ball's got to come out quick, and you have to know where to go with the football, really, in pre-snap. Identify where you want to go and get rid of it. No fields is off, and on comes Cairo Santos for the Chicago field goal. And quite a bit of pizza in this box. It's a 53-yard attempt. Santos' kick is up and through, and this is back down to a seven-point game. So as it turns out, that sack doesn't wind up costing them, Charles. They at least get points, get three of them. Yeah, that's where your kicker can really come to your rescue because you know after the sack there was a little consternation there. Are we out of field goal range? Are we going to be able to get three? In this case, he stepped right up and gave them exactly what they needed. After the made field goal, Santos back out there to kick it away. Takes it at the seven. And he takes this near the 25, just a little pass there, call it the 26. And now out comes Minnesota. The offense coming back out here, plenty of energy ready to roll, looking to just add to what they have been doing after scoring a touchdown, Charles, their last time out. And that's a great feeling to have on the sideline, partner, knowing you just won the battle against the opposing defense. And since they came off the field, I'll guarantee you all they want to do is get back out there because they know they have the upper hand on that defense right now. On first and 10, Cousins. And that is caught on the right sideline, but out of bounds, says the line judge. The throw took him a little too far. It's second down. Well, there's times when you see these catches that are made, and we just know the guys playing it are really wishing for college rules. Only need that one, one foot, foot down instead of two. It's awfully difficult on the sideline, isn't it? To throw again on second down. Cousins to the right side and complete to Jefferson. Two yards the loss and now third and 12.
We'll see what they have drawn up here. A little bit behind the line. 12 yards needed to gain a first down. On third down, they run with Madison. And they're able to get this one across the 35. He'll get 15 and a Vikings first down. Most of their damage has been done through the air. I mean, they've rung the bell three times with passing touchdowns. But guess what? Ground game has not been neglected. Nice little burst right there. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. Draw play, Madison. And he'll get it out a couple yards shy of midfield at the 48. 58 yards rushing for him now in the ball game. Now that was an excellent run. And when you see that happen, that's when you're seeing guys doing their job and then some people doing a little bit more. Offensive linemen and tight ends, they're expected to block. But the wide receivers, all they want to do is catch passes. So when they block on a big time running play and create extra space, you've got to hit the jackpot there. This one caught by his tight end, Oliver. And they'll get this down to around the 47-yard line. We've hit the two-minute mark in this first half of action. Cousins now to throw on first down. Complete Jefferson the target. And they'll get this down to the 42-yard line. Six yards left on second down. Cousins now. And his throw here is incomplete. He was trying to find Justin Jefferson there. And it's third down. The coverage was good, but I just wonder if they absolutely fooled the quarterback on that play. I think he was expecting something else. Ended up with nowhere to throw the football successfully. So it's third and six, and this will be the eighth play of the drive. To the air again, it's Cousins. Got an open man finding Jefferson. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made here at the Bears 30. The drive stays intact with a pickup of 13. Well, this is where reading defenses and practice time comes into play. You've got to know what you're running versus zone versus man and how to run the proper route. And they just executed that one pretty well. A throw for Cousins. Throw caught there by Osborne. And they will eventually get him down, but he's inside the five all the way to the three. A chance to really cap off a big first half here as they come up on first and goal. Again, it's Cousins. And it's caught in the end zone. Touchdown, Minnesota. K.J. Osborne from three yards out. And the Vikings will extend their lead in the final minute of the half. Partner, to me, that touchdown had something that was kind of rooted in that group seeing the future. And what I mean by that is they had a plan. Let's find a way to score right here before the half. And that'll give us momentum going into the second half. Give us that cushion that we're looking for. They got that accomplished, scoring right before the half ended. Joseph connects on the extra point. And the lead now up to 14. So the drive goes 75 yards, 10 plays, and it's polished off by a Viking score.
Now Joseph tees it up to kick off following the touchdown. No run back here for Jones, a touchback. Are the Bears going to take over now late in this first half? And Charles, you're down multiple scores, less than a minute left here, but with that deficit, they've got to try to at least work their way into field goal range to try to muster something out of this drive. And I'm going to go ahead and date myself one more time because I'm going to quote an old Smokey and the Bandit lyric. They've got a long way to go and a short time to get there, but they still have time to get it done. So I'm looking forward to watching them mount this drive and see if they can get some points out of it. Now a first down throw, Fields. The Vikings after him, and they get there for the sack. Now the Bears going to call the first of their timeouts as they get the stoppage with just under 50 seconds remaining in half number one. They come up on second and long, and the pass protection just has not been there this afternoon. Another try after the first down sack. Fields, that ball nearly intercepted. The rookie had his hands on it, but couldn't pull it in. Well, as we get ready for third down, let's go back and recap here. The sack on the first play of this drive, that threw a wrench in what they were trying to accomplish because they were compelled to throw the ball on second down. A running play was not in the works. And that incompletion set up another passing down here on third and long. And he'll lose yardage here, back to the 15. Now a second timeout called for by the defense as they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the first half. Now here's Trenton Gill now. Oh, the return is Powell. They'll score that a 36-yard punt. And the Vikings, they'll be set up well as they take over in great field position, first and 10. This offense returns to the fold along with running back Alexander Madison. He's been good. His guys are winning. So far, the recipe working here in the second quarter. He doesn't like to just tote the rock. He wants to carry his team on his back. And that's what he's done throughout this game. Yeah, he's done that. He'll be hoping to continue that trend. Cousins on first down. He's going to take a shot right away for the end zone. And incomplete on the deep ball. He's put up numbers in this one by pushing the envelope a bit whenever he could with deeper throws. But let's play a little philosophy here. Some plays it works, sometimes they're ready for you. And that time, they were on guard, incomplete. So now second and 10 after the incompletion on first down. Now Cousins. And his throw is gonna be incomplete. A couple of quick incompletions, and now they're just one more away from getting off the field. They've got options now. Could they dial up a blitz here or just drop everyone into coverage to crowd the throwing lanes? So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has them staring at a third and ten. Cousins to throw it. And he's got this to Jefferson. Touchdown, Vikings! Justin Jefferson as the first half is winding down. And the Vikings will extend their lead here just before halftime. That score that they just gave up there, that's a tough one for their defense to swallow because they've had a tough time through the first two quarters. They really were determined to get a stop there, unable to do so. That makes their comeback hopes that much more difficult. Joseph on for the extra point. And he's been a busy man. Five for five now as he knocks another one through to extend the lead. Scoring summary. Three-play drive. And it was all capped off by Justin Jefferson's touchdown reception.
So not much time to speak of remaining in this first half as the kick's away. And not wanting to risk anything here late in the half, he'll just take a knee and they'll bring the football out to the 25. At the line, prepping for their next drive, the Bears offense. And with time quickly fading here in the second quarter, not sure how aggressively, offensively they want to play this. I think we'll find out just how much they trust their guys in this situation if they decide to take a shot. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. So we hit halftime with our visitors, the Vikings, taking the lead to the locker room. As we send you down to Orlando, where Jonathan Coachman has our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. Back to you guys in a bit. But first, we welcome everyone to our EA Sports Halftime Report. First, though, let's run through the next-gen stats for the Vikings in that first half. And our statistician may need a vacation after this one's said and done. What a first half they had throwing the football. Over 300 yards passing already. All right, Coach, thanks very much. Fine work as always as we welcome you back for quarter number three. The Bears going to see the football first, and they trail here as we get back underway to start this second half. And we will not have a run back here as the second half starts with a touchback. So here's the Bears offense now as they get set to start this third quarter. Well, they look up at the scoreboard facing that deficit. A three-score game, Charles, but look, there's plenty of time to go here. The old football cliche that comes to my mind is you can't get it all back at once. They probably need something, though, out of this drive, at least three points. Are you trying to say that there's no three-score drive on that play sheet for any of those coordinators? They just don't have it, right? <laughs> You're trying to get it all back. You know you can't get it back in one drive, but maybe cut into it a little bit, as you just suggested. Try and create a little bit of momentum, a little bit of a spark, and then maybe that'll carry over. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. That ground game contained again there, Charles, and that's really a big reason that they're trailing right now. They give a lot of credit to that defensive front. That's exactly what they worked for all week to try and take away the run game, make them one-dimensional in the battle of game plans. Theirs has been superior. A second down pass play there, but it's incomplete. It looked like they had something there, but I think that he was thinking about running with the football before he actually hauled it in, and that led to a big drop. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Now Fields. He's going to look deep down the field. And that's caught inside the 35. And he'll be marked down at about the 26-yard line. Now, look, you're not going to be able to get this all back at once, but that certainly helps. So you're saying three yards in the cloud of dust, not the strategy? I go aerial attack. Yeah, I think that's what has to happen. And if you're going to run it, you need to break off big chunks. We just saw a big play right there. They need plenty of those. So now then, the big play has them all the way inside the 30 now, first and 10. Here's Foreman. Down to the 25. 
They follow up that gigantic gain with the tiniest of pickups, one yard. Another modest gain there on that one, and I think, Charles, you can probably pin part of the deficit on a failure on their part to really get this ground game established. Yeah, they've really struggled to be multidimensional in this one, haven't they, partner, because they have to be extremely one-dimensional now if they hope to get back into this game. They'll have to do it by throwing the football and hope to have success through the air. And this is going to turn into another first down as the tackle is made at the Vikings' 12-yard line. Mark that down as a pickup of 13, and the Bears have the first. From down at the 12, it's first and 10. Fields. And he floats one there. Yeah, 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 yeah. The certainly didn't appear that that's where he wanted to go initially, so I tried to get something out of it by dumping it off to his running back unsuccessfully. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. From the gun, here's Fields. Throw left side, taken in by Claypool. And down inside the ten here before he's out of bounds right around the seven. Five yards, now it's third and five. Timing is so important on a route like this because he's going to line up out right and then cut straight across the field. I think the ball might have come out a counter two too late because by the time he was able to secure it, not much of a chance to turn it upfield. Yeah, he's got it. And just shy of the goal line as he's out of bounds right at the one. The gain of five that time gives him the conversion and makes it first and goal. But with the score where it is, you're not thinking field goals right now. You need touchdowns. So that was a much-needed conversion there on third down. To throw his fields. Open man, he finds Komet. Touchdown, Chicago. A one-yard touchdown pass. And the Bears are able to cut into this lead as they score on the opening drive of the second half. That's a score you felt they had to have here in the third quarter to get back in this game. And you know that there's an emphasis on their side. Hey, we know this. We know where we are. But sometimes that binds you up so much that you try too hard you don't get the score. A perfect combination of urgency yet relaxed enough to get it done. Santos with the extra point, and the lead will be cut down to 14. So that drive consumes nine plays all told. And it was all capped off by Cole Komet with a touchdown catch. After the touchdown here, Santos to kick this one away. From the six. There's a glimpse of Justin Jefferson, the wide receiver, as he and the Minnesota Vikings return back here on offense. And we get a peek at the kind of game he's having. It's been a good game. Eight catches now, Charles. Everyone likes to spread the ball around. They want a lot of people to catch it and touch it, get a lot of guys involved. But sometimes when you have the hot hand or a person who is just really taking care of business in their part of the field, you have to keep going back to them. Cousins and the Vikings with a first and 10 at their own 22. Going to begin the drive here with Madison. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. This defense could use a few more plays like that right now. It certainly could, but think about it from an offense's perspective right now. They've got a lead, but they don't want to throttle down too much and stall themselves. Still want to move at a nice pace. He 
Here's Madison getting it again on second. And he'll take it ahead to the 28-yard line. 65 yards on the ground for him so far. Well, you certainly have to give a little credit here because they're playing this game now at their pace. This is ball control football, sustained runs, taking their time, and making it work. Here's Cousins. Open man is Osborne. He's got it. And he gets this up across the 35 before he's out of bounds. Fifth catch of the afternoon, and that gives him a first down. Third and four, he did just enough, and I mean just enough, to move the chains. And that's all you're looking for, right? Just want to keep the drive moving. You don't need the big play there. Just get to that marker that you described, and he was able to do just that. So from the 36 now, first and 10. They'll run it with Madison, and they're going to stop him right at the line of scrimmage. Just no cutback lane to be found whatsoever. Second and ten. Looked like he was trying to bounce it outside, but no success. Yeah, sometimes you got to just figure out where you're going to go, and sometimes you just have to take it to another spot. And trying to get it outside, the defensive pursuit was there and just ran him down. Cousins now on second down. This one brought in by Jefferson. And a five-yard gain gets him to the 42. That's what it is! That's what it is! The Bears bring out an extra defender in the secondary now for third down. Going on the ground with Madison. Four yards on the pick up there, but it's going to take him to fourth down. This team doesn't mind running the ball in any situation, and I thought he was going to get the first down the way the play developed, but the defense closed in and stopped him just about a yard short. And here's Ryan right now as he'll punt it away for the second time. He gets this away. It's a good one. Drawing toward the sidelines. And this is going to be ruled out, I think, just inside the 20. Yes, it will. Side judge calls it at the 19-yard line. The Notre Dame man, Chase Claypool, in this offense, ready for their upcoming possession. Good day for him so far here in the third quarter. He's hit pay dirt once, over 100 yards, but... Hey, it's the third quarter. He's thinking, I want more, right? He wants more, and it just increases the confidence of his team because every play he makes, that means his quarterback is really feeling good about throwing the football. Probably feels like he can't throw an incomplete pass when he throws it to him right now. Yeah, he's looked really, really sharp. Now, the first play of the drive there is incomplete. Let's face it, if you want to get back into the game, these are the kind of throws you've got to hit. He's wide open right there got to be able to get it to him, don't you think? And those are the throws that haven't been available to them every time he's dropped a pass. Yeah, that's a big miss. After the incomplete pass here now is second and ten. Back to throw. Fields. And his throw is incomplete. Tough series for the passing game. Things just aren't clicking. Hope they can come through on this play and get the series back on track with a completion for enough yardage for a first down. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Fields now to throw. Eluding the field's hit, and the ball is loose. And the Vikings pick up the football. And they'll have a short field to work with inside the 15 at the 13-yard line. That feels like an accumulation of the pressure we've seen all game. I mean, he's been on the turf a whole lot because of sacks. Eventually, something else happens as well, and this time it was a turnover. Yeah, caught up to him. Now the Vikings offense gets set to take over here. They've got the ball in a great spot here, already inside the red zone following that fumble recovery. Let's go, 
From the 13 now, they work on first and 10. Cousins now after the fumble recovery. A quick throw knocked away and incomplete. And to put it mildly, this is a tough spot defensively. They have to come right back out and defend their red zone. But how about that good first step towards forcing them to settle for at least three points? I think they're also thinking bigger right now. Imagine being able to stop them totally and change the momentum. To throw on second and ten. Cousins. Now they go screen. It's complete. And here he'll get it down to the seven. They get six. That'll leave them with third and four. And they've used him in the passing game to great effect so far. And here they get it to him again on the screen. And it turns into a nice positive play. Well, they were handed great starting field position on this drive, but now they face a third and four. Cousins. And it is caught at the seven-yard line. And he maybe makes it back to the line of scrimmage. That's it. No game on the play. And that's going to bring up the fourth down. Excuse my snarkiness here, but isn't the idea of completing a pass supposed to mean you get downfield and gain yards especially on third down yeah that one how about the defense figured that one out in a big way yeah they completed it all right and lost yardage fourth down field goal try coming so cousins is off and on comes greg joseph for minnesota from the left hash a chip shot here the kick by joseph is good and that will extend their lead even further so the fumble recovery had them set up in ideal field position, but they can muster only three points out of it. Yeah, when you're able to force turnovers, especially when it results in field position like they had, you really want to make it hurt. Here, they take the field goal. That's definitely not what they were hoping for. Joseph now to kick this one away. And this will be a touchback as Ed sails over the end line. The Chicago offense set to get started. I kind of feel like they've reached a do or die point in this game, Charles. If they're going to try to pull off an impressive comeback, it has to start right here, right now. Yeah, now they've got a final chance to get out of this situation, but they also understand they've got to move the ball and move it fast. In addition, they need to save as much time so they can get two more possessions. Fields and the Bears now with a first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. Now it's Fields. And the throw left sideline here is caught, but they'll rule it incomplete. Couldn't keep his feet in. Second down. But tapping those toes, he tried to get both in bounds. He could not do it, though. In tap dance parlance, could not complete the shuffle. All right, needed to get that shuffle down with both feet, not just one. Is that what they say? There it is. You know, put a little sand down on the stage. I'll take your word for it, my man. He'll be dropped after a gain of about six across the 30 to the 31. Oh, partner, just a second earlier, and they might have had him because they certainly thought they were going to close in and drop him behind the line of scrimmage, but he had just enough time to dodge the pressure, and he ends up getting yardage before being stopped. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Here's Fields. And he's caught on the sideline, but he's not going to have a first down. They say he was out of bounds, so a big call there that brings up fourth. Well, the other day they told us when we've got third and five or less, we have to be able to convert. And I guess every team would say that, Charles, but an opportunity miss there. What they were trying to tell us is they believe it's a matchup game at that point. And they liked some matchups that they had, thought they could exploit them, unable to do so on that play. And the fair catch is made at about the 27-yard line. 37 yards on the punt with no return. And the Vikings will take over here first and 10.
They'll start on the ground with Madison. And that to the 30. It'll be second down. Give credit to the defense for stringing that play out. And they gave up no cutback angle. You know he was trying to dart through. No place for him to go. A nice job there, only giving up a three-yard gain. From the 30 on second down, Cousins. They'll get this underneath to Madison. A gain of three last play. This time they double it and pick up six. Cousins on third and two. Complete, Jefferson the target. And he will have a Vikings first down. It's a gain of six that time on third and two. Gotta say, I was a little surprised to see him, Charles, come out in the shotgun on third and less than a yard. Yeah, but the way the NFL is nowadays, we hardly ever see anyone really run for it on short yardage. So they're gonna throw the football more times than not. That was a nice, easy rhythm throw right there, and they pick up the first down. Cousins now to throw on first down. Oh, it's a screen pass. That's complete. A good convergence there defensively. Only a yard and it's second down. The key to any screen play is all in the deception. That means everyone on the offensive side of the ball. But someone gave it up because that one wasn't very well concealed. And the defense able to rally to him and hold him for just a short game. Looking to throw again on second down. Cousins. Catch is made by Hawkinson, the tight end. And they're going to get this up to midfield. On play action, Cousins. He finds his man complete. It's Osborne. And he will have a Vikings first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. And while we may be looking at the scoreboard, this offense certainly is not because they're showing no signs of backing down, even with a three-score lead here in the third quarter. I think they keep taking their shots. They've seen blown leads happen throughout this league. They don't want to fall victim to it themselves. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. They'll run with Madison. And he fights forward for a modest two-yard gain, second down. Certainly a nice job there by the defense rallying to the football and getting him on the ground, but I think the play gets made by the defensive front because if they can't get upfield, their job is to go ahead and get low, almost get into a ball sometimes, stack things up, and make it difficult for the runner to find a hole. Now we've got movement up front, and I think this is going to be on Minnesota. Well, this O-line's been great. They've got the big lead, so give them a pass there, I guess. Yeah, I would think so, because if we were grading them on their performance in this game, a lot of pluses in their boxes so far. And that false start penalty is certainly not helping their cause here. Second down and long. Meanwhile, Cousins' throw pulled in by Jefferson. And he'll be hauled down at about the 30-yard line. Brandon, so many times we see the crossing route start as a quick hitter, but in this play, he had time in the pocket and waited for him to clear going across. Here comes play number nine now as they come up on a third and three. Now Cousins. Now he'll dump it underneath to his running back, complete. And he will have a Vikings first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Another catch for him there on this drive, Brandon. And it looks like they're going to utilize him out of the backfield any way they can. And that time they pick up a first down. So now on defense, do you assign a man to him and try and cover him before he gets going?
First down, here's Cousins. Looking left side, and he's got a man. That's Osborne. And stopped a few yards shy of the goal line at the three. 18 yards there, and it'll be a first and goal. It'll be first and goal when we come back. We'll return with more after this. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. Back now at Soldier Field. It's the Vikings in possession of the football and the lead. They'll be looking to add to that total as we begin quarter number four. They're able to get a couple here, but won't get across the plane as they stop him right around the one. Good work there, holding him out on first down. And this is going to be a battle down here on the goal line. Can they hold their ground for two, maybe even three more plays? Second and goal from the one. Again, Madison. And he will take this one into the end zone for a Viking touchdown. Alexander Madison, his second touchdown of the afternoon as his guys are able to push that lead out a bit further. And you wonder now if he might be able to remove the helmet, put on the baseball cap, and watch the rest of this one from the sideline, his fifth touchdown pass of the game. Say that again. Did you say fifth touchdown pass of the game? Yes, sir. But that's a heck of a performance, isn't it? Because they've had no answer for him at all, all game long. Receivers have been open constantly, and he hasn't missed a single one of them. Joseph now to have the PAT. And the lead is now 24. So that drive, 12 plays in length. And it was capped off by a touchdown scamper from Alexander Madison. Now Joseph tees it up to kick off following the touchdown. This will be fielded inside the five. And not much happening on the return as he'll get this to about the 23. The Bears now ready to take over again. But we said it at halftime that they would need a nearly perfect second half to erase that deficit that they were facing, CD. But unfortunately, the second half has pretty much been a carbon copy of the first. Yeah, that early lead was almost insurmountable the way their opponent was playing. And, partner, they do have some good news, though. This one is getting close to being over, and they can try and hit the reset button starting tomorrow. Fields and the Bears now with a first and 10 at their own 23. Here's Fields. And he slides and covers up at the end as he's going to be able to pick up decent yardage. He'll wind up getting nine after tucking it and running, so it'll leave him with second and a yard. I do think it's fair to say that they were caught off guard a little bit when he decided not to throw it on first down. But give them credit, they recovered in time to deny him the first down yardage. But it's only second and short, so that run is still likely to lead to a new set of downs. Throwing again on second down. Fields, they'll set up the screen to Herbert. Four yards the pick up, first down. The defense was ready for the back to leak out and even had a second player waiting to double him up. If you're going to commit to doubling a back, you better prevent a completion, but give him credit. Extra determination, extra effort, turn it into a successful play. On first and 10, here's Fields. Now they set up the screen. That's complete. Only three there on the screen at second down. So many things have to come together just right for a screen pass to break for big yardage. The blocking, the timing of the pass to the runner, everything has to fit together just right. But on that play, the defense was able to disrupt things and hold it to a short game. From the 39, Fields. Open man is Komet, the tight end. Fields to commit there for a Chicago first. Let's go. 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 Let's go.
Let's go, man. Let's go, man. Here we go. Let's go. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. Good coverage downfield led to him taking off, picking up the first down on a 13-yard run. He's been making himself a weapon as a runner, and the results, they've been welcomed by his offense. My question is about the defense we're watching right now, partner. Even after he got him with a scramble earlier this drive, they still aren't devoting enough attention to him. I would expect that after that carry, they'll do a much better job going forward, spying on him on passing downs. And they'll wind up getting this one all the way down inside the 20. No one there to help out downfield, but no problem. Scrambling for 22 to first. Well, that turned out better than most of the passes he could have thrown on that snap. The coverage downfield was excellent, but the containment close to home left him a backdoor escape, and they paid dearly for not locking up. From the red zone now, they'll look to throw. And Fields going to have the first down before sliding to a halt to avoid the contact. Another strong gain on the last two plays. They've moved it a combined 33 yards. Fast, slow, it doesn't matter. If you give a quarterback enough room to escape, he can hit you for a big gain. You've got to give him a little more focus moving forward. Now Fields. And he is in. Touchdown, Chicago. Justin Fields with his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Bears are able to cut into that deficit. The quarterback run has eaten him up all game long, and there he goes again, this time into the end zone. And what I like about what I'm seeing, absolutely running almost with impunity. He's not worried about his body. He's not worried about sliding. He's not worried about protecting himself. He's worried about getting yardage. If you're on the defensive side of the ball, you've got to start figuring out what these blocking schemes are and finding ways to defeat him. After the touchdown, here Santos to kick this one away. And this will not be returnable. It's out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. Alexander Madison leading this Vikings offense out there to begin the next drive. He's toppled the century mark already receiving the football, closing in on that on the ground, too. They've really had trouble handling him. I think from what we've seen in this game, his success through the air has started to open things up for him on the ground because now he's loosened up the defense, right? They've got to play just about every snap as if another receiver can get downfield on them, and he's been that receiver. Now they bring him back to the backfield. I think his yardage running the ball will increase as this one goes on. Well, they might need to devote some extra attention to him, something just to stop the momentum he has. And not much to speak of. Call it a one-yard gain up to the 26. Not a big run on the first play of the drive, but that doesn't necessarily mean it was a bad play. Sometimes you're just trying to settle in, get your guys a little bit of contact, and get things moving. The last play got just a yard. Here's second and nine from the 26. To throw is Cousins. To the right side and complete to Jefferson. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. He's been big. Two touchdowns earlier. Now he's got a first down here. Well, normally you might say start running the football. You've got the lead here in the fourth quarter. But the way that they've passed it with such success, I don't know, maybe keep throwing it. Yeah, I think you brought up something that goes against conventional wisdom, right? In this stage of the game, you would think you would switch to a running attack, but you're exactly right. They've thrown it so well throughout the game. And trusting this quarterback, I think he continue to do so. Here's Madison running on first down. 
And some pretty strong running there as he'll take this across the 50 and down to the 44. 91 yards here for Madison. He's got a first down. Well, that's a carry they have to be satisfied with. And throughout this game, they've been satisfied with what he's given them. Whenever they've needed a big run, a first down, he's the guy they've turned to. And it doesn't matter what the defense thinks. They feel like they've got the confidence to keep handing it to him and keep picking up good yardage. So into Bear territory now. This is first and 10 at the 44-yard line. Going to run with Madison again. And good space to operate there as he takes this down inside the 35-yard line. Ten more there and another first down. And I'm guessing you'd say this is kind of the key here. Grind out some yardage, work on that clock, see if you can continue to tick it down. Definitely, you want to bleed things out at this point, right? Continue to possess the football, gain some yardage, and put the onus on the defense. Do they have to use timeouts? What are they going to do to stop you? You're taking charge. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. Throwing his Cousins. Right side, it's the tight end, Hawkinson. And he's going to get seven out of this before being taken down at the 27. If nothing else, they've already taken a couple minutes off the clock here already as they come up second down. They go play action. Cousins. Toward the left sideline, but it's incomplete. Had an open man that time, but ended up putting a little too much heat on it, don't you think, partner? Absolutely. Just needed a touch more air under it. Instead, he fired an absolute bullet. Seventh play of the drive now as they come up on a third and three. Play action now. Cousins. Going to throw deep for the end zone. And that will be incomplete. Well, they weren't scared to let it fly, but it falls to the ground and brings up fourth down. But that was certainly an aggressive call and an aggressive play. Instead of just going for the first down, Took the shot in the end zone, went for the touchdown. Yeah, and on third down, they said, forget about the sticks. We want six. They're going for it. Here's Madison. And he will have a first down at about the 21-yard line. Oh, well, we kind of looked at each other as they decided to go for it. But in the end, great execution, a six-yard gain, and it all works out. Starting to become a tough spot for this defense. You're down fourth quarter, looking a little fatigued maybe on that side of the ball. Partner, we've seen this before, haven't we? Because every coach we've ever talked to says body language is important. And now you're seeing guys with their hands on their hips, they're bent over, hands on their knees. And the offensive guys are just saying, let's just keep running it out. And we've got them now. So after the conversion on fourth, here's first and 10 just outside of the red zone. They'll go Madison up the middle. And he'll take it down here just shy of the 15 at the 16-yard line. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. Brandon, I've got to think this offensive line has got some smiles on its faces. And, and I know it sounds crazy, but they practiced for this back in training camp. They knew they'd be in situations where it'd be extra defenders in the box coming after them, trying to keep them from locking down a game. Right now, they want to show the world they're up to the challenge. He will push his way down to about the 14. It'll be a pickup of a couple, and it leaves him with a third and three. Defensively, we always know that he is tough in run support, and I think the way that he gets there is he understands what an offense is going to do before the ball's even snapped. A great job of scouting prior to the game, then reading, reacting, and taking the right path to the ball carrier. Third and short yardage, Cousins. And this is going to be incomplete. What an excellent defensive stand there in the red zone. Nice tight coverage. They certainly recognized how important it was to bring up fourth down here. Fourth down, field goal try coming. So Cousins is off and on comes Greg Joseph for Minnesota. This to make it a three-score game late. Joseph's got it, and that will extend their lead even further. 
So that almost certainly the final piece to this puzzle, a three-score lead. I don't think there's any coming back from there. But you know, normally I'd get on you for giving up on the game right here, but I do think you're right in this case. This late in the game, two scores is tough enough. Three, I'm with you. That seems out of the question. Joseph now to kick this one away. From the six. And they'll get him down inside the 30 at the 27. Onto the field now come the Bears. Well, this game, it has had no shortage of offense. They've been able to put up a decent amount of points on this side, Charles. They just have not been able to keep pace with the other offense they're going against here. Yeah, it's a good way of pointing things out because now it's not a total loss because, as you said, they've scored some points, so there's some plays they can build on, moments where the game plan actually worked. But overall, though, they were just out-personnel. They were going up against a team that's playing at an elite level. On first down, it's Fields. Flush to his right. And Field's going to have the first down before sliding to a halt to avoid the contact. It's a gain of 11 yards that time, and it produces a new set of downs. These are running back numbers that he's accumulating right now. We see double-digit carries and has rewarded them by breaking the century mark and rushing, in addition to what he's done through the air. Definitely MVP caliber football we're witnessing. Field's throw there, hauled in by Claypool. And he'll take this to the other side of midfield before going out of bounds. 16 yards is the pickup there and a first down for Chicago. Clock management, definitely critical here if they want to get back in this game. Absolutely agreed. They have to up the tempo in this case, down a couple of scores. Want to make sure they have a chance to win this ball game. On first down, Fields. To the right side and he's got more complete. And he'll go out of bounds after taking it a little further down inside the 40. They had two straight first downs, now a gain of nine to set up second and one. That time they hit him out of the slot on the drag. And that route takes some fortitude from the guy running it because he knows he's going through the briar patch, as I like to call <laughs> it, right? He's trying to work his way through all that traffic and people wanting to put a little contact on it. Really well done. Now a throw here, hauled in. And this is going to turn into another first down as the tackle is made at the Vikings' 22-yard line. A really nice pickup of 14 yards, and it moves the sticks. And passing yardage-wise, now up over 350 in this game. Pretty nice performance. Definitely that, which usually means you're putting a lot of pressure on guys trying to cover. If you're a defensive back and they put over 350 yards on you, you've had a long day. The key to everything, if you're doing it without throwing interceptions or turning the ball over. Now a throw to the end zone on first down, but it winds up incomplete. That's coverage you'd expect to see in a tie game late. Not in a lopsided game like this. They are not letting up. So after the incompletion, second and 10 from the 22. To throw his fields. And he'll slide to a halt here, still a little shy of the first down marker. Give him seven there on the tuck and run, and they're in better shape now for third. This is a rarity in the NFL, a 100-yard game on the ground for a quarterback. Even as those passers get more athletic and mobile, we only see about five of these a season. It takes a special set of circumstances for it to happen, and of course, a special player. On third down, Foreman. And he will have the first down inside the 10 to the 9-yard line. Able to get what they need to keep the drive going with a 6-yard pickup on third down. We all love to have a home run hitter in the backfield guy can take it the distance. But a short yardage, trying to pick up first downs. That big guy, always a nice luxury to have, isn't he? Two minutes left to play in this football game here on EA Sports. So the Bears with the football here as we welcome you back. First and goal, and they got to be thinking a chance to get right back into this football game. 
This is caught. Touchdown, Bears! Chase Claypool, a nine-yard touchdown grab. And the Bears have got it back to a two-score game here in the fourth. And that touchdown puts us in a position to have a discussion, doesn't it? Now it'll be a two-score game after the conversion. Yeah, I mean, there's no doubt with a two-score game they're going to have to onside kick it. We'll just see if they've got a miracle up their sleeve. And you wonder what onside kicks they're going to use and in what sequence if they hope to have a chance to win this game. Two scores down, three timeouts left. Still a chance if they can somehow get this one back. And the Vikings able to recover. The hands team does its job. They knew they needed a miracle. They had to have that onside kick. They didn't get it. Well, as we knew, even before they put the, the toe to the leather on that one, their chances of getting that done, slim and none. And I do believe we saw Slim just leave the door, didn't we? We did indeed. I think we're down to none. Minnesota's offense takes over possession and a few kneel downs should just about do it now defensively they do have all three timeouts but very little reason to use them at this point here's Madison now the Bears going to call the first of their timeouts as they'll talk things over prior to this upcoming second down play. Another carry now for Madison. And here he'll be brought down a little shy of the 35 at the 36. Now a second timeout called for by the defense. And they'll be disappointed to have to burn one there after giving up the first down. They'll try and run some clock here as they keep it on the ground. He's brought down in the red zone at the 18 after a gain of 18. First and 10. Now the Bears will use their third and final timeout as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. Game in hand, the offense takes the lead. A second and 11 from the 19. One back in the backfield, he'll get the carry. And for one of the few times here today, this run's not going to go anywhere. Officially nothing on that one, no gain, so they're left with still 10 to go on third down. They've called his number a lot this afternoon. You wonder how much tread is left on those tires. We certainly do, but I always think back to one of my favorite coaches in the NFL. I used to have a meeting with his running backs every year in the offseason and say, look, as many times as you're going to carry the ball, you should be able to carry it one more time to make sure you get in shape. Charles, a 
lot of happy faces heading into the tunnel as this one ends, and understandably so. Not only did they get the win, but boy, their offense was on fire in this ball game. And partner, I have no idea what the top speed is on one of those high-end sports cars. What's the top gear you can get into? This offense, they certainly were there in this one, huh? Everything clicking for them in this contest, the kind of performance that they're going to cherish.